Hi everyone, you're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel and I would like to welcome you to my studio again. So today I'm going to be doing watercolour inks which is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm just going to do four different techniques that you can do with watercolour inks that you can do in any projects you've got. So I'd also like to say if you like my videos please make sure you press that subscribe button and click that bell so that you know when I'm going to put more videos up. I'm also going to be launching very soon my new Lucy's Craft Cafe which is going to be lots of different projects and kits and that that will be available with online classes so please make sure that you follow me with that. There's a link below to Art Shed Angel on Facebook and you will find more information there. There's also our Facebook group which is Live Art Journaling and Self Development where I do a live video every week and so does Jolene Payne. So, let's get started. Okay, so for this project, I'm just going to use watercolour paper. So I'm using quite a heavy watercolour paper. Um, really any would do, but I'm going to use a 300 GSM watercolour paper. And I'm going to just stick it down. So I'm going to do a few, um, four different things here. And... One of the great things about watercolour paper, now I'm sticking it down so that I get a little bit of a border because I'll probably like to make this into a card. So I'm just putting a little sort of even edge around and I'm putting it onto this so that I've just got something firm to work on. you don't have to stick it down if you don't want to. I do like to do this because it stops it buckling. So one of the things I always have when I do watercolours is I have two containers of water and both of those containers are clear containers so that I can see how dirty my water is getting. And one of the reasons for that is that if my water is getting very, very dirty, I can end up with muddy looking colours. So one of the things I'm going to show you really first is just wetting the background and I'm actually quite soaking the background. Okay, there's a lot of water on here. You can, if you soak the background front and back, you'll get less um, um, bowing. So then I'm going to use my watercolour ink and I'm just going to do drops. Now this is not unlike what I've done in the video that I did with alcohol inks. Um, these inks work very similar on watercolour paper, so long as they have that nice amount of water to float on. And the great thing about this now is I can let it run. That's one of the reasons I've got it on this board, so that I can allow this to run. And you can see that we're starting to get some really lovely colours happening there where they join together. Now I'm going to add some ultramarine. Now the ultramarine is very, very dark and you only need the tiniest bit of it. So I'm going to then give that a bit of a spread. Okay, so you can see it's like a darker inky colour. And with that you can also use your brush to thin it out a little bit and also drops of water. So I'm just doing a very kind of, I suppose celestial kind of background here and you can see where the green hits the yellow. We end up with that beautiful, um, almost turquoisey color. So this, this is just a very, very simple background using the water colored inks. Now I let it roll around a bit now you might end up say, well, there, there's dark bits I don't want. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some rice and throw this rice on top. Now you'll see the end of this at the end of the video. So I'm using quite a bit of rice. Okay. So now I'm going to let that dry for a little while while I show you something else. Okay, 
Okay, so this one here I'm not going to stick down because I'm not going to get it wet yet. So what I'm going to do is you can use matte medium or gloss medium or you can use clear. What do you want is a clear kind of medium. So I put a little bit of clear down and I have this stamp here which is a locket. And I'm going to take this stamp and I'm going to stamp it on the background. Now you can just barely see where it is, so just be careful. I want to do a random background using this, but I don't want to overlap them. Although it wouldn't matter if I did. So I don't know if you can see that, but I'm ending up with the locket on here. Now I'm going to take my heat gun and dry it off. Okay, so I've used my heat gun to dry this off and now I'm going to wet it down again. Now I've got my two different waters here and I've washed my brush out in the water in the one that I um, used first and that means I've got clear water in the other one. And I'm also going to, still a little bit of blue in that brush, I'm just going to wet this background and... I'm going to put some colour down. Now this is the purple and the amethyst and it's so, so dark. So what I'm going to do is use my brush to spread the colour. And you can see how magically these are all starting to appear. So it's kind of a resist technique, but this is such a lovely way to do a background. So I'm going to put some more of the pink and maybe even a little bit of the blue on here. Now again, some of these watercolour inks are so strong that you really only need to use the smallest amount. So don't go over the top because you're just wasting it. Now this one here I'm doing some strokes. I want to blend it but I just don't want pooling which is wouldn't matter but I'm going to just dry this off now. Okay so now we have this background. Now if you give it a little bit of a rub with a cloth just a tiny little bit that's a little bit damp it will actually clean the paint right off but don't rub too hard because it is watercolor ink and you can see there that we've got these beautiful um, patterns now you could do this with any kind of stamp now do make sure after you've used anything like acrylic paint on your stamps to you give them a really good wipe off so that's a resist technique you could have used i've used gloss medium you could use matte medium you could use um clear gesso you could use any kind of thing that you can actually stamp but you could do it in colors too but i think that one looks really really lovely so that's number two now I've brought the rice one back because I really wanted to show you what happens. So I've got my little container. Now you can reuse this rice and I'm letting this rice all fall into the container and you end up with quite a special effect. So, look, oops, still a bit of rice there. Look at the beautiful effect we've gotten with the rice. We've gotten this beautiful stippled effect, which is really, really lovely. So I'm just going to take it off here. I want to dry it off. And I'm just using paper tape here, but washi tape works really well for this sort of process. Okay, let me dry it off. So there we have two beautiful watercolour backgrounds and they would both be really great put into a um, art journal. Now I want to show you what you can do with some watercolour inks and a jelly plate. Oh, 
there's the bit of paint still on my board. Doesn't matter. Then I'm actually going to wipe, put some water on this jelly plate. Now the water on the jelly plate won't do very much. I'm also going to act, add some Liquitex gloss medium, just a little tiny bit. And I'm going to spread that over the top and you can see that it's separating which is what I want because now I'm going to put some drops of this ink on the plate I think green and yellow this time and I'm just going to spread it out a little bit do some wacky kind of patterns because what I want to end up with here is kind of an opal effect. So I've, I've wet this down and I've got that there and I'm now going to place that over the top of the jelly plate. And we've ended up with a really sort of sploshy background. Now I'm going to dry this a little bit because I want to put it down again. Now what you're getting here is a really beautifully mixed up kind of pattern which you wouldn't get if you um, did it straight on the paper. So they're squishing it on the jelly plate or even a piece of plastic you could use. Now I'm going to just use my finger to spread some of this dark blue around. And then I'm just going to lightly drop this down because I want that. How good does that look? So I've just done that really lightly. Now also keep a piece of paper because you may have some leftover. Now I've got this piece of paper here. You can see if I press that on I've ended up with some really nice patterns. So don't ever throw this ink away that you have on your plate. But what I really wanted here was this beautiful effect that I've gotten and that was by just being really quick in and not squishing it too much and you can see here this will be a, a great so let's do um, watercolor ink idea four now these are just simple inks it's in, simple ideas I'm just taking some of this color off so I stop mixing it and it's great with the jelly plate because it'll just come straight off now again I'm going to wet this Okay, and I want to show you that with the, uh, one of the reasons I'm wetting this is because it'll, it'll give it a bit of a surface for the paint to do stuff on. Now this time, I'm going to use some gesso, and I'm going to brush this one to here. You could use a brush or a roller. Okay, and I want it to separate a little bit. I want it to look a little bit like lines in a, um, a wooden board. So I'm going to put some green and some blue. Now your watercolour inks will work with all different mediums so don't just think it's a product that you're going to buy and use once. You can do all sorts of different things with them. So now I'm going to take the end of my brush because I want this to look a little bit like wooden boards. So I'm just going to scrape down. And now I've wet my paper. And I'm just going to press it down. And look at the beautiful results we've got there. So that's just using the jelly plate. Now because the colours are in lines, if I do this way now, we should get a little bit of a crisscross pattern happening. So that's a really nice way. Now I've got a heap of paint left on there, so I'm just going to get a piece of paper you don't want to waste it so this is just paper out of a book and I use all these bits for my um, different um, journal work so that's a really beautiful pattern 
Okay, and I could just put a little bit of yellow on here. This is the thing when you do this mixed media kind of work, you start thinking to yourself, oh, just add a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So that's one of the reasons I'm now starting my um, craft cafe because I really want to do some classes and show people some lovely things to do. So here I've just added my ink. Now you would not have thought to use watercolour ink over the top of an acrylic paint or a, or a gesso, but what you, you can use these inks to colour your paint. You can use these inks to colour things like modelling compound. So if you wanted to do something on your paper with modelling compound, you could absolutely do it over the top of that. So I'm just going to put that back over the top and pick up that little bit of yellow. And you can see I've just picked up those little bits of yellow. So these are just really, really simple things to do. But I just wanted to show you that you could do a resist technique and that you could do a... Um, you could do it mixing with other techniques. Make sure you've always got your little lids shut. So I'll just get them all together and show you what we have made. So the first thing I'm going to do is tip this rice off here. Look at all this beautiful coloured rice. And we haven't gotten a, a lot of effect in this one but there's a little bit of stippling that I can see there. So, from this, we have created some really lovely backgrounds. And they were all using the watercolour uh, inks. Now, watercolour inks are different to acrylic inks. Um, you do need to make sure that you, I mean, if you wet them back down again, they will bleed again. So I'll just quickly show you that. So if you wet, watercolour ink down it will re-blend so so that is a useful thing so just remember that if you want to do any kind of painting over the top of this that you need to give it a bit of a seal first or you could stamp over the top of it so Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you give this a go. Um, it certainly is a little bit of fun and I think I'm going to do some dragonflies in this one. Thanks a lot.